as usual with the beauty community on TikTok, there's some drama going down and it stemmed from the most unsuspecting situation that started off harmless. But once people started to look into it, uh, it became a bit suspicious. Today, we're talking about the foundation that Glamzilla reviewed, which made it go viral and why people are starting to side eye her review. It's a mess, so let's get into it. Glamzilla is no stranger to my channel, mainly because of her history of not disclosing her ads. She does a typical thing that Michaela and other influencers do where they disguise their sponsorships as genuine reviews and then hide their disclosure in the hashtags. This is the plumping skincare duo you need to try out. So you know Skin Fix, they're, no they're viral. They're known for building a healthy skin barrier. And this combo is clinically proven to give you seven times the plump. So I start off with a serum. I go in with two pumps. It helps boost your skin's natural ceramide and fatty acid production. And then you go in with the triple lipid cream. Everyone loves this. This went viral, like viral. This is going to deeply hydrate your skin and leave it looking so glowy. I got you zoomed on in. Look at that, oh my gosh. Glimzilla has been called out for this time and time again, but just like Michaela, nothing really changed. Last week, Glimzilla reviewed the Laura Mercier Foundation that came out nearly a year ago now, and she had that typical shocked influencer reaction. <laughs> You're gonna love this new foundation. Oh my God, I am obsessed with it, like, I'm just gonna apply my whole face. Like, I think I could do this in like 20 seconds. Hold on. Oh my god. It's so good. It's like, my goodness. I zoomed you in. I had to pause to zoom in. Oh my goodness gracious. This is like my dream foundation. And after I apply with a brush, I like to pick up the excess foundation with a beauty blender. It, it just makes a big difference. And, okay, what is it? What is it? I know that's what you care about. Laura Mercier. It's the Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. This is a waterproof formula. It's a waterproof formula and it lasts it, it lasts all night. Like I've worn this to concerts. Like I've worn this out to eat. Like what? It's so freaking good. I'm in the shade 2C2. That's all I wanted to show you. It is so good. Oh, so good. And admittedly, the foundation does look really nice and I can see why it ended up going viral. So many influencers were stitching her video, rushing to try out the foundation and the brush for themselves, and it quickly became this year's telescopic mascara. All the biggest beauty gurus were reviewing it, sharing their thoughts, and making her review gain even more traction. Glamzilla was gaining tons of followers from this review, and that's when people started to take a closer look at it. Some people started to question whether the review was sponsored. One person commented, not paid sponsorship, right? And someone replied and said, nope, paid sponsorships are marked. And they replied back and said they should be, but they aren't always. And this is the problem that these creators are running into. Since they choose to not make their paid reviews obvious by saying that they're working with the brand or making sure the video is clearly marked as sponsored, it makes people question all of their reviews going forward, even the ones that are genuine. I don't think this video was sponsored. Glimzilla usually will put the partner hashtag even if it is hard to find and doesn't stand out. This video doesn't have that, so I'm gonna go ahead and guess it wasn't actually paid for. Another reason why so many people are accusing her of being sponsored is because pretty much all of her reviews feel like sponsorships. The way she reviews things is usually very positive and structured in a way that's brand friendly, probably because she is looking for a sponsorship. If you're going to buy a lip liner from the drugstore, it should be this one. It's by NYX and it's my most used lip liner. It's the lip pencil in the shade natural. It's like your lip, but flirtier. Looking flirtier already. Okay, hold on. Um, you can feather that in just like this. And look at the difference already. Hold on. A little overline never hurt anybody. So pretty on its own. Just feathered in like this. <laughs> but I do it all over my lip. Let's be real. See? 
Gorgeous, so flirty, so fresh, and so you still. Since the interface is so different from any other platform, you have the ability to post a review that isn't sponsored. And if the brand sees it and likes your review, they can buy it from you and you can turn it into a physical ad without having to do anything. Most of her reviews feel like that's what she's hoping will happen. And that's why she's so over the top and complimentary towards everything. This brow pencil is foolproof. It's by Maybelline. One side is a powder and the other is a pencil. Start off with the brow powder and just fill in your brow just like this. And then you turn it around and then you can create your brow hairs just like that. So easy, right? I think you're gonna love this. Manny actually called this out on his podcast. Do you know who annoys me? Who? It's the is on TikTok who do sponsorships without disclosing okay and okay. i i would give specific names but i really oh, don't want to so get there's drama. a person out there that you've seen i've seen multiple so it's they're just not like, putting uh, ad or like partner or anything no or like they try to make every video seem like an ad seem like an ad yes so i i, oh, I have this like explain, theory explain. i have a theory that sometimes people will quote unquote review products okay on online on tiktok and they'll review it to be better than what it actually is so that the brand works with them or tries to buy their content. Essentially make an ad for the Making brand. Making an ad for the brand without disclosing it because it's see. not technically an ad. But the brand can buy it back to make it into an ad. Wow. So, I, so they're fishing. I, they're they're fishing. fishing. I think there's creators in the beauty space specifically that do that. That's so interesting because back in our time, maybe I didn't notice it, but that wasn't a thing because well, we didn't have like, short form content. No yeah. So you couldn't do that. Like, can't you, do it on YouTube. You couldn't, yeah, on YouTube, you can't like get a brand to buy it for ad. Yeah, it didn't. No, like they have to sponsor work. you first and then, yeah, you can't backtrack. But with TikToks, you can save, send, repost, share, sponsor, like put the sponsored on. Like you can do all that kind of you stuff. Can do all those things. So influencers have gotten smart. I see. I say sneaky. Have, influencers have gotten sneaky mm -hmm. and they're trying to fish an ad out. I, and brand. I think it works. I feel like I've seen it. I'm like, they're totally creating this product and or creating this like thing, this like false sense of like, oh my God, it's a sponsorship, but it's not, but the brand could buy it back. And many people feel like he's talking about Glamzilla. So far, it doesn't look like Laura Mercier has purchased this review from her. And I mean, why would they? It went so viral and so many people are talking about their foundation. It's at the point now where they don't need to pay for it. Well, some people think Glamzilla might be a bit upset about them not buying it from her or sponsoring her because she actually came out after the review went viral and said that foundation isn't her favorite foundation. Hey, I'm the girl that made the Laura Mercier foundation go viral, but that's not my favorite foundation. <laughs> this is, I love that formula, but I, let's talk about my actual favorite foundation. I've been using it for eight months, so it's super old. The name's rubbed off. It's by Fenty Beauty. It's the Eavesdrop Blur Skin Tint Stick. I swear by it. Let me show you. Let me zoom you in. I'm in the shade number nine. Like, you can go in. Like, it doesn't matter how much you use, how little you use. I just blend it in with my fingers. Wow. So freaking good. You can even, you can even apply it with a brush. It's all up to you and how you like to apply your makeup. I like it because it's a soft matte finish. It lasts all day on me. It's very hydrating. And you see, it's it blurs your skin. It gives you a nice tint. And like, look at this. A little goes a long way. You can do it for a natural coverage. Or you can go in a little bit more and build that up to medium. It's really up to you. Like, I love it so much that I'm still using my summer shade. But nonetheless... I look like this. Look at that skin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it gives you that glow. It's a nice tint blurring. Okay. Anyways, this is my favorite foundation. And everyone in her comments was so confused because you would think by her shocked reaction, that would have been her favorite foundation. But now here she is going, no, actually it's this one. I don't think the switch up made a lot of sense to people because all the comments were like, the Laura Mercier one looks so much better. One person even accused her of trying to get on Fenty's PR list, writing, tell me you want the company to send you a PR box without telling me you want the company to send you a PR box. But I guess this person doesn't really watch Glamzilla because if you did, you would know that she's pretty much like an ad for Fenty at this point. My biggest flex is Rihanna's makeup artist is doing my makeup right now. What are we using? Fussy. This is Rihanna's favorite, right? 
always. <laughs> you ain't kidding though, right? She uses this on everything. Everything, on top of everything, by itself, on top of things. This is the shade. Fussy, it's the gloss bomb. Fussy, get it. She's always giving them great reviews and she even went on a brand trip with them last year. But the issues with Glamzilla's review don't even stop there. After the response she got from the review and seeing how viral it went and how many influencers got involved, she wanted to do more. She put out a video saying that she wanted to review products from influencer brands like Jeffree Star and review techniques from influencers like Michaela and mentioned how badly she wanted to try James Charles's new palette. Hey, so I'm planning out content and I want to know what you think about this. So after the Laura Mercier went viral, it went viral because so many large creators, like huge people with influence reviewed the formula so it popped off but i want to go buy jeffree star's recommendation i want to buy michaela's recommendations and i want to buy james charles's new palette let's buy nikki tutorials line i here's the thing i already bought jackie Aina candles shout out to you for being the bad like i want to try out the recommendations is it hot fire like i want to know but before I do so, this is our community. I need to hear from you guys. Are you okay with this? I, I'm very curious and I'm very excited. This is something I'm excited about. Let me know. Is it problematic? Are you going to cancel me? I don't. Aren't you curious? Like, aren't you curious? Oh my God. Okay. Let me know. There's no right or wrong answer. There is no alliance. This is just makeup. And as you guys can probably guess, the mention of these influencers did not go over well with her audience at all. One person wrote, James Charles? You're supporting him? And another said, that's ick. Michaela is a known liar. James Charles is a Jeffree Star? He's always in a controversy. And I don't think Glamzilla is used to getting this kind of negative attention because she was really trying to fix the situation in her comments. She replied to one person and said, I'm not associating myself or associated with any other views or past mistakes. I'm specifically curious about the makeup. I'm a whole different person, right? I want to know how these formulas are. And that's when Robert Welsh, who is a very respected member of the community, commented on her video and said, You are directly funding that person though, with your money through your purchase and review. I expected better. And that's when Glamzilla decided that she needed to get on video and make a response. Robert, hold on, Robert. You already know I'm a fan. I DM'd you that long time ago. I'm a huge fan. Anyways, um, Robert... I never knew you had expectations of me. You expected better. Like, I remember when you made this video about your political views and your, your views on this. I was just like, okay, more power to him. I maybe even gave you, like, I don't know. But, like, those are your opinions. And as a beauty lover, I know this might sound shallow. I just want to know my opinions. Is the mascara really fuckproof? And, like, James Charles' painted line. Wouldn't you, like... For redemption, wouldn't this be the best thing you ever came out with? So nobody could clock here? You? Like, I want to know. What's the vibe? And a lot of people in the com I'm not editing this. I'm just going straight off. So excuse me if the words aren't right. Um, a lot of people in the comment section are saying, you're associating yourself with uh, these type of people. I ain't associating myself with nobody. I'll tell you that straight up. I just want to know. Is it good? It's that simple. Is it good? If you are a fan of them, is it worth your money? Does it perform better than what we already have? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm a beauty lover. I'm just a girl who likes to spend makeup, money on makeup. You know what I mean? I don't know. But this whole situation, are creators going to hate me? My fellow creators? If, if so, it's not worth it. But I'm also really curious. And I know my following is curious too. Because you guys in this comment section lit that green. You guys want to see those reviews now here we go this is the problem i need to decide this is scary so forgive me and please don't put expectations on me shit shit i was like chill i'm your canadian asian latina bestie chill man it's just makeup oh my gosh is it though i don't know see i'm just a girl chill 
and this is not sitting right with people. She just had this huge boost from her viral review with all this new attention and followers that she's been getting to go from the high of that and then wanting to jump into reviewing brands where you know that you're going to get backlash from, especially when she's always been very brand safe, is definitely an interesting choice. Now look, Glamzilla is like not the worst influencer ever out there. She does give back a lot and she does a lot of really great things that other influencers aren't doing. I expected her to maybe use this opportunity to highlight small brands and help them out and find new products that aren't being talked about. There's millions of reviews out there reviewing these big influencer brands or these huge influencers' favorite products. If she wants another viral moment on TikTok, she would have a much better chance getting there by reviewing something that no one's heard of before and works amazing. Bria Jones actually replied to her video and she suggested that she does exactly that. I'm the girl, I love you so big. But what if, hear me out, you used your superpowers to put on small brands and minority owned brands. You broke the internet with that Laura Mercier foundation. Like you can do this if anyone can change the game. Cause we hear about the same brands all the time but there are so many inclusive brands that just haven't had their moment. Like what if it was you? And it looks like she may be because I know she did follow up with a smaller Canadian owned brand, which is nice to see. Although we all know many of these big influencers don't love giving free shout outs to smaller brands, which brings me to our next topic. As you guys know, we just talked about Michaela getting called out by Matthew for not reviewing his self tanner after she promised him and let him on for months. Michaela came back to TikTok on Monday and just like she does after any kind of controversy, she decided to be shady about the situation. This is a purchase, and if you can't tell, it's from Kimchi Beauty. Basically, I plan on doing a full face of Kimchi Beauty. It may be in four months, it may be next week, I don't know. It will definitely happen. And of course, Michaela's fans lived for her being shady, and many people felt like her doing this PR unboxing in the first place was her way of being like, see how many brands send me PR and want me to review their stuff? Luckily for Matthew, it looks like this controversy worked out in his favor because he's been selling a ton of his tan. He's been packing orders, working non-stop, probably getting more support than he would have if Michaela had just given it a good review. Finally, I wanted to talk about an influencer over on TikTok who's been so honest that people couldn't believe it. I know that's rare to hear, but it looks like there are some honest creators over on that app, no matter what kind of relationship they have with these brands. Douse Mendoza reviewed Patrick Starr's new One Size Beauty Primer, and going into the review, I think a lot of people expected him to give it a glowing review since they do have a really nice friendship. Come pack an influencer PR gift bag with me. Put this in. <laughs> to turn up the base. On to the next the morning. shade, fair neutral. Fair. What attention seeker. Cheap shit, bro. <laughs> Big manly hands dropped it. What attention seeker. Hey, and sweetness. one brand new primer to cure the glow. Thank God. <laughs> oh, I don't think I had a clear one. But he didn't like it. And he didn't let his relationship with Patrick hold him back from being honest in this review. One size is dropping a new Secure the Glow Tacky Hydrating Primer. And it literally has like little eggs in there. All I care about is 24 hour hydration, long wear, and grip. Because that's what it says. Let's just go right in. This is also supposed to work with literally every single foundation, concealer, primer, whatever the fuck you try. Supposedly. Miss One Size told me herself. It's super, super hydrating. Oh, shit. see what happens when I rub that pimple? Already I can feel how hydrating it is. It's not tacky at all yet. I'm gonna let it sit for like three or five minutes and then see what it feels like. It's been about five minutes. It is slightly tacky, but it's not like as sticky as like Elf Hydro Grip or something. Casi nada. But my skin does feel very hydrated. Okay, I just finished my entire makeup routine. Um, not even gonna lie, this did start peeling twice. It started peeling once, once I started spot concealing, and I went and I washed my entire face because I was like, okay, maybe it was the moisturizer that I used beforehand, which is weird because the moisturizer I used beforehand has hyaluronic acid. So does this. So I completely washed my face, nothing on it, and then I reapplied this, and it peels again when I apply foundation. It does say secure the glow. 
It didn't really make me glowy. Would I use this again? Probably not, only because, I mean, it hydrated before I put foundation. But after I put my foundation and shit, it didn't really matter. And then it made it peel. This is one of those products where I just don't know what to say. Like, it didn't grip. It didn't glow. Otherwise, I'm gonna stick to secure the blur. And I think honesty like this is so rare now that a lot of people were probably initially really confused by his review. Although I'm sure this kind of honesty is maybe shocking for people to see at first because we're really not used to it. Most people loved seeing this kind of honesty from a creator. We had people writing, at Michaela Naguera could never be this honest on a review. You go douse. Love the fact that you gave a raw review, especially knowing Patrick's your friend and didn't just immediately promote it. And Douse replied and said, can't put a check behind my honesty. And honestly, Michaela and Glamzilla need to take notes because this just goes to show people respect an honest review so much more, even if it means upsetting the brand. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below, and I'll see you next time.